All right, today I have a 2001 Dodge Ram 1500 with the 46 RE. Uh, some people may also refer to it as the 518 electronic. And we're gonna go over a common problem, very common problem, probably the number one common problem with this, are the two sensors on the valve body, the governor pressure solenoid and the governor pressure sensor. All right, they are pretty much what controls, uh, they control the upshifts and downshifts for gears one, two, and three, and then the overdrive solenoid takes over for fourth gear. Uh, so we're gonna go over a common issue with that, and if you have a scan tool, it should be fairly simple to diagnose if you have a shifting problem. Uh, also, another couple of common issues uh, of things that break that you should look at and even if it's not broken you should probably change it if you're going to be working on one of these transmissions and this also goes back to the like the 42 RE, the 44 RE, the 46 RE and even the 48 RE all right and the, the one uh, that always breaks the one spring that likes to break a lot in the valve body is the 3-4 accumulator spring doesn't really, like you really wouldn't know uh, a lot of times by driving it uh, that, you know, you may have a harsh upshift, downshift. I mean, it's possible in, in, in fourth, uh, three, four shift and four, three, you may feel it may not. Uh, also, a lot of times if your clutch clearance is off, uh, you'll have a harsh shift uh, up and down. Um, also, the overdrive direct snap ring likes the break. This one is okay because I think that what the guy was saying this transmission may have been done a couple of years ago. This came in with no reverse and I'll show you why that the, the um, linkage for the band actually broke uh, and uh, reverse lost reverse but forward worked okay. Uh, Alright so uh, we're talking about the overdrive direct snap ring. Uh, that spring, that snap ring I'm going to show you behind, uh, when it's the units together, it's honestly behind probably about an 800 pound spring and that clutch is on uh, in reverse because it has to be because that spring keeps it on and first, second, third and in fourth when the overdrive comes on it releases that. So if that snap ring breaks and those clutches come out, a lot of times uh, you, you will lose reverse and it won't work correctly on the forward gears. A lot of times what happens is when people bring their transmission in or their car in for a routine service and it's one of these again it could be the 42 44 re and we drop the pan and do the service a lot of times you find a piece of the snap ring laying in the pan so it is very common for that snap ring to break so that always gets changed regardless uh, this one again is not broken but you know i don't know if this thing was changed when this was done a couple of years ago so it's automatically getting a new one. All right, so getting back to uh, these solenoids, I'll give you a close-up shot of these because uh, this uh, governor sensor is actually the fourth design. And here is a shot of the harness. Um, again, this controls the upshifts one through three and downshifts. So pretty much what you have to look for on a scan tool, they may have, uh, actual governor pressure and desired governor pressure and voltage. So just like a TPS, a typical TPS, you would know it would start maybe at a half a volt and at full throttle maybe go up to like four or four and a half volts. This kind of is the same way. This starts at on the scan tool at a half a volt and as you increase road speed, the voltage will go up and the governor pressure will go up. All right, the easiest way, um, to look at this is look at actual and look at desired. They should match. Also, as you're driving, uh, and at zero miles an hour, you should have zero governor pressure. Figure at you know 15 miles an hour, 15 pounds of governor pressure, 25 miles an hour, 25 pounds of governor pressure. So if you have an issue shifting, uh, say it's not shifting at first. Uh, you could be doing like 20 miles an hour and show five pounds of governor pressure. So, you know, something is wrong there. A lot of times these 
solenoid screen in here may clog. I've seen that from maybe a converter clutch or something coming apart. Or say you're at a stop uh, and you have maybe second or third gear start. So again, at a stop, zero miles an hour, zero governor pressure. But if you're at zero miles an hour, you could show 20, 25 pounds of governor pressure. So you're gonna get a, a second gear start, maybe third gear start from that. So the best way to diagnose this is um, pretty much with the scan tool. Um, it could be, you know, a wiring issue. It could be a computer problem. It could be a lot of things, but most of the time, I've seen a, a lot of that, you know, but most of the time, uh, it's pretty much just swapping out the two sensors. Usually fixes it. You know, it has there's a five volt reference you'd have to get into and check, uh, but you can have codes. Uh, like governor pressure offset drift, governor pressure volts too high, governor pressure volts too low. So that's why you really need a scan tool uh, to diagnose that and see exactly what's going on as you're driving the car. So let me get a little closer here and I'll just show you these uh, sensors real quick. Um, I want to show you the spring on the valve body. This particular spring is broken. So I'll show you the location of it. It's right on the valve body, pretty simple to get to. And Again, I'll show you the snap ring, and this again came in with no reverse, and I'll show you the piece that broke. But um, I think that's about it. You know, the, this is, again, the number one uh, common issue with these cars. Uh, a lot of times when they come in with these codes and they come in not shifting correctly, uh, we do repairs instead of doing the, the overhaul. Because, like I said, most of the time, the governor solenoids may fix the problem. And the governor sensor, the governor solenoid is the two pin sensor. Uh, that pretty much stayed the same all the way through. Uh, the governor sensor, this is the governor solenoid, the governor sensor, which gives the feedback to the computer, uh, changed uh, this, the fourth design. And this also incorporates the uh, temperature sensor in it as well. So this uh, governor solenoid regulates the pressure that it's fed and it gets the feedback from this sensor here. So usually when you change them, I change them in a set and probably the best thing uh, to get are, are the ones from, I usually just use the Mopar ones. Uh, I believe there are ones made on the aftermarket, but um, I just stick with the Mopar and I usually don't have an issue. Okay, so let me get a little closer here. We'll just go over these. I'll show you the spring, the accumulator spring, and uh, I will be back in two minutes. Okay. All right, here's a close-up shot of the two sensors. Again, the governor solenoid, the governor sensor. Okay, they sit in this section of the valve body. All right, one goes here, the other one goes here, but goes in this bracket here and then you have the holder that holds this on so this actually is how they sit in the transmission and again if you drop the pan take the filter down uh, sometimes you may not even have to take the filter down uh, but I'm not sure if it's in a way or not but probably just be easier to get access to it uh, you can service these right from dropping a pan very simple Okay, and again, the governor pressure sensor, it kind of goes with the harness. All right, so this, this is the latest update again, and this came out maybe, I'm going to say about 2000. And prior to that, it was a round connector, so uh, you have to match the harness, you know, to your, to your, uh, uh, sensor, but this basically is for 2000 and up. I don't believe that you can retro this all the way back because uh, the signals uh, that the PCM was seeing are different. Uh, this one sends different ones than uh, the other one that would be for 99. Uh, but the rounder ones, uh, I believe there is, there's three different designs on those, so those can be updated. You know, you can update it with the latest design. Um, you may also have to update the harness as well. 
I believe the first one that came out had three pins, and that is no longer even in production anymore, so it's only the, the four pin round, or this one. Uh, this is the latest one, which is the, um, you know, it's all plastic, um, 2000 and up. So these are uh, a very common problem to get codes on these. Uh, like I said, a lot of times when they come in, we don't even do an overhaul, just change out the sensors and, and that will fix the car depending on the code. And some of the codes that this could generate, I have a couple written down here. All right, so some of these codes that can generate a 1757, governor pressure above three PSI with zero miles an hour, um, governor pressure not equal to target, which is 1756, there's uh, uh, 1764, governor pressure sensor volts too low. So those are the type of codes that uh, can generate, and of course, it may not be shifting correctly. Uh, you may have uh, second gear starts, it may even shift to third and fourth. Uh, it uh, may not shift at all out of first. So you really gotta use a scan tool, again, to diagnose uh, what's going on. Okay, here is the valve body, and behind here is the 3-4 accumulator spring. Always check this spring. I would say most of the time it's broken. All right, here is the piston, and this is how I found the spring. All right, just like this. So I get these for my supplier, put a new one in, I put some new seals on here. And that's it. Again, you may feel something, you may not feel something. You know, you, you're not, I'm not going to drive the car and, and, and feel like a, a huge, a, a violent shift on the 3-4 because the spring is broken. You know, most of the time I know it's broken because I check every one of them and I see it's broken. And again, a quick shot, close-up shot of the Overdrive Direct Sapring. It is wavy. Okay, and this is in the back of the unit. I gotta still clean this unit up. I just tore it down last night. It's in the overdrive section. It is called the Overdrive Direct Snap Ring, and it sits around right here. So these things go like this. There's probably seven or eight frictions. You know, you just stack it up. You know, one second, let me just turn my lights back on. So a lot of times, also, these clutches, you know, they're pretty good. I mean, it's always on, except it gets released in fourth gear when the piston, you know, applies and it pushes the clutch off. So an another thing, um, you know, if you're checking your clutch clearance and for fourth gear, and these and you put one that's too thick and then you put this on and release this clutch you'll have no reverse and uh, you know it may not work with going forward again if this clutch is on in reverse and first second third all right here's the rest of them i'm going to stack this whole thing up and if you have this apart might as well tell you this too this stack up kind of goes like this All right, you gotta, you gotta line up the splines here. There's no splines in here, there's two pushing here, but you gotta line these splines up. And I use a, um, uh, a shaft that I cut, and I have like a half shaft, and I use the splines here to line everything up. Don't just put it together, because you'll never get it in. You gotta line up the splines. Uh, all right, so I guess that is about it. Now, let me just show you this here. This is the reason why just a quick one here, why we have no reverse. So this uh, is the one of the band struts for the reverse band. I actually found one, can't believe it. And I think that's about it for this uh, 2001 uh, Dodge Ram 1500 46 RE. And again, as far as the governor pressure Actually, everything we spoke about, 
uh, would go from the, the 42, 44, 46, 48, RE uh, series transmissions. Okay, so I have another 46 RE with no reverse out of a 2001 Dodge Durango. All right, so you saw in the first part of the video, I showed you the overdrive direct snap ring uh, that I always change on every overhaul. This one actually is the problem with this, why it has no reverse. The snap ring uh, totally broke up and the clutches came out and there's no reverse. So what happened with this was it came in slipping real bad the guy figures uh, that maybe we could just get away with adjusting the band or something like that. So what we did is he left the car. Uh, he said, whatever it needs, you know, we're going to get it done. But I dropped the pan just to take a look at it. And of course, in the pan, I found the snap ring laying in the pan. And I checked the band adjustment. It really wasn't that bad. So I knew we were dealing with the broken overdrive direct snap ring. So I just want to give you a shot of that. Uh, the broken snap ring we're gonna i'm gonna wind up changing the drum and the hub as well which i'm waiting for and there's one other problem that i don't really see too much but it was a common problem back then i see it here and there i know i did mention it on a video that i've done but i just like to go over it again and that is the inner lip seal on the direct drum they give you two in the kit I'm not really sure why a skinny one and a, and a thicker one. And the problem was, well, the problem is, if you ever see this, when the car is cold, you have no third gear until it warms up because the, the I guess the inner seal shrinks down, the oil can't get under there to apply the piston. And then when it heats up, no problem. So to rectify that problem, uh, what they do now is they put a thicker inner seal this one actually goes into the drum so i have the seals here they still both come in the kit but again you know just the thicker one is the only one that's used the other one i, I throw away uh, so i'm going to get a little closer i'll show you this uh, overdrive direct step snap ring and, and the other stuff we're gonna i'm going to be changing and the lip seal as well just i wanted to add a little something onto this video since i did get one now with a bad snap ring all right so let me get a little closer and i'll show you what's going on Okay, so here is what's left of the overdrive snap ring. Now, I think this guy might have been, of course, driving it. I mean, he didn't know the snap ring was broken, but he kept driving it until this thing slips real, real bad. But there's really nothing left uh, of this snap ring at all. I mean, this thing was totally out. The clutches were totally out. And this is the over, overdrive direct tub. I'm trying to clean it up. The clutches and, and steels really aren't that bad. The pressure plate I'm going to have to change, but as I put the clutch over this hub here, you know, it, it, it's not it's not smooth, and it seems like it's it's binding a little bit. I'm trying to clean it up, and again, these clutches have to be released, and if they're binding on the hub and they cannot be released, then that's going to cause uh, some issues there. Okay, this actually is called the Overdrive Direct Drum. And we got some broken pieces here that hold the snap ring in. Okay, some of these lugs are broken off, so I got uh, one of these coming as well. And here is the pressure plate, which got a little uh, damaged from the snap rings running around. So I have another one of these that I did have uh, that I'm changing as well. So this is another reason why, again, whether the snap ring comes in good or bad, uh, if this unit's been done already, you know, I don't know that this snap ring's been changed, so every overhaul gets one of these snap rings. Very important. And I know we spoke about the uh, accumulator spring, and again, this one, like I said, most of the time you're going to find this spring broken, so that, again, is broken. Okay, and here are the lip seals. Let me just uh, clean my hands here. Here is my new uh, snap ring, by the way, that I'm uh, going to be installing. All right, so here are the lip seals. And it goes on the inside of this drum. I always like to change the bushing here, by the way. All right, so it goes on the inside of this drum. This is the direct drum. You got the intermediate band that rides on the outside. 
All right, if you can see the O-rings here, uh, this one is thicker, and this one, of course, will stick out more, and this is the thinner one. This is what comes through, and that can give you a problem of no third when it's cold. So this is the one that always gets installed, and this is the one that I toss, because uh, I have no use for that. I'm not even sure why they still put it in the overhaul kits. All right, so if you do buy an overhaul kit, this actually is a trans tech kit. Uh, I know there are, are other overhaul kits out there. I don't know what they put in them, but Transtech puts both of them in. I'm not sure if the later, if other kits just put the thick one in, if they just put the thin one in, I'm not sure, because I don't really use any other kits. So that is a common problem we saw a lot, honestly, back in the day. You know, I'm talking maybe uh, uh, 15 years ago. We would get a lot in with no third cold, and we knew right away that uh, this uh, O-ring or lip seal uh, had shrunk down. And the way we would test it, and the way you can test any seal, is take the piston, you know, the seal that you want to test, uh, take the, all right, so I have this on here, let me just take this off, this seal, this is the new one. And what you want to do is when you put this in, you can't really spin this one, but you want to feel drag, you know. If the piston would seem like it will fall out on its own, then that lip seal or that seal is not doing it. And more than likely, you know, that, that could be what your problem is. So that's a way to check it out. Uh, if there's any question if the seal is working or not. So I just wanted to throw that up there at you. Okay, and uh, I guess uh, that is about it on this uh, 46RE with uh, some common problems. All right, and thank you guys for watching once again. Have a great day, and we will see you next one.